afternoon, friends. This is Angel Wallace speaking. It's September the 15th, 2020. It is 2.15 p.m. and I've been working all morning on a video for you. I had a beautiful, beautiful interview this morning with Mike Kirkpatrick, my dearest friend. And, uh, of course, uh, you know, Murphy's Law had to make its way through, so I didn't get the darn thing recorded. And I was so upset with myself. I am still kicking myself, and I already apologized to my dear friend, and I felt so bad. But uh, life goes on, right? And so here I am uh, coming up with a new video. <laughs> One I hadn't prepared for, but today is a real historical and exciting day. And uh, after decades of division and conflict, uh, President Donald Trump has marked the dawn of a new Middle East, and he's congratulating to the people of Israel, the people of the United Arab Emirates, and the people of the Kingdom of Bahrain. God bless you all, and God bless the world, and God bless the of the America and God bless the President of the United States and thank you Lord for working through President Trump to get this accomplished. I want you to watch this video because it's a historical moment. We're here this afternoon to change the course of history. After decades of division and conflict, we mark the dawn of a new Middle East. Together, these agreements will serve as the foundation for a comprehensive peace across the entire region something which nobody thought was possible. For generations, the people of the Middle East have been held back by old conflicts, hostilities. These agreements prove that the nations of the region are breaking free from the failed approaches of the past. Today's signing sets history on a new course. Today, the world sees that they're choosing cooperation over conflict, friendship over enmity, prosperity over poverty, and hope over despair. They are choosing a future in which Arabs and Israelis, Muslims, Jews, and Christians can live together, pray together, and dream together, side by side in harmony, community, and peace. Once again, let me congratulate the people of Israel, the people of the United Arab Emirates, and the people of the Kingdom of Bahrain. God bless you all. This is an incredible day for the world. A historical event indeed and oh my gosh that's an exciting event and uh, who would have ever thought uh, that that would come about but thanks to President Trump he managed to get that done also we're celebrating the National Hispar Hispanic Heritage Month and it's a proclamation on National Hispanic Heritage Month 2020 so let's see if they've got a video to go with this it would be nice let me read what he says. This is a proclamation on National Hispanic Heritage Month 2020. During National Hispanic Heritage Month, we celebrate the countless contributions of more than 60 million Hispanic Americans to our culture and society. Hispanic Americans are the largest minority group in the United States today, and generations of Hispanic Americans have consistently helped make our country strong and prosperous. They contribute to our nation beyond description. Hispanic Americans embody the best of our American values, including commitment to faith, family, and country. They serve in our military and protect us as members of law enforcement. In fact, Hispanic Americans make up half of our border patrol agents. The Hispanic American community has left an indelible mark on our government, our culture, and our economy. As part of our commitment to promoting the success of Hispanic Americans, my administration will always promote educational opportunity for our nation's Hispanic American communities. Hispanic Americans benefit greatly from school choice programs, including the nation's largest school choice program in Florida, where more than one-third of the recipients are Hispanic American students. No American student should ever be trapped in a failing public school or a school that does not meet his individual needs. Additionally, we have spurred the creation of more than 16 million education and training opportunities through our pledge to the American worker. My administration is also working to increase economic opportunities for Hispanic Americans by providing pathways to in-demand jobs and investing in Hispanic American communities. 
On July the 9, 2020, I signed an executive order to establish the White House Hispanic Prosperity Initiative to promote educational and workforce development, encourage the private sector action and public-private partnerships, and to monitor how federal programs best provide opportunities for Hispanic Americans. Additionally, this executive order established the President's Advisory Commission on Hispanic Prosperity, which is dedicated to advising my administration on ways to improve access to educational and economic opportunities for the Hispanic American community. This year, my administration also delivered $1 billion in funding to minority-serving institutions, including Hispanic-serving institutions. And since I signed the Tax Cut and Jobs Act of 2017 into law, nearly 9,000 opportunity zones have attracted an estimated $75 billion in new capital investment in economically distressed areas, helping to bring wealth and jobs to the neighborhoods where many Hispanic Americans live. We already we are already seeing the positive results of these policies in communities throughout the United States. In the 2017-2018 academic year, the graduation, graduation rate for Hispanic students at public high schools rose to 81%, the highest level ever recorded. And before the coronavirus pandemic, the median income for Hispanic Americans had reached its highest level in history. Unemployment reached the lowest rate ever recorded. The poverty rate for Hispanic Americans also hit a record low, and from 2017 to 2018, 362,000 Hispanic Americans became new homeowners, the largest net gain for Hispanics since 2005. And in the past four months, as we have recovered from the coronavirus, we added 3.3 million jobs for Hispanic Americans. It is my promise to the Hispanic American community and to all Americans that my administration will continue to do everything in its power to rebuild the economy, ensure opportunity, grow wages, and cut regulations so every family can achieve their own American dream. Hispanic Americans will play an incredible role in our country's greatest years to come, and my administration proudly stands with them. Their steadfast commitment to America's core values, their steadfast opposition to socialism and their innumerable contributions to our prosperity enrich our nation and add to our unmatched culture and way of life. To honor the achievements of Hispanic Americans, the Congress by public law 100 to 402 as amended has authorized and requested the president to issue annually a proclamation designating September the 15th through October the 15th as National Hispanic Heritage Month. Now, therefore I, Donald J. Trump, President of the United States of America, by virtue of the authority vested in me by the Constitution and the laws of the United States, do hereby proclaim September 15th through October 15th of 2020 as National Hispanic Heritage Month. And I call on public officials, educators, librarians, and all Americans to observe this month with the appropriate ceremonies, activities, and programs. And in witness whereof I have hereunto set in my hand this 14th day of September in the year of our Lord, 2020, and of the independence of the United States of America, the 245th, Donald J. Trump. At the funeral ceremony for George Herbert Walker Bush, the world witnessed the strange scene of American nationalist President Donald J. Trump seated with the aging globalist cabal of past presidents and politicians. It was awkward. But there was something else odd going on. It was noticed that several of the globalist political players received an unexpected letter inside of their program. Hillary Clinton was the only one who kept her poker face when looking at the mysterious letter. Former Vice President Joe Biden appeared to be distressed when his wife found his. Laura Bush had a look of anger 
and could barely keep from staring at hers. And when she showed it to Jeb Bush, as his deceased father was being carried in front of him, he was distressed enough to take his hand from his heart, and he looked rather troubled by what he saw. The internet is abuzz with what these mystery letters are all about. Many who hope to see justice served in our corrupt American system speculate that this could be a foreboding message to America's traitorous first families. One can only hope. Whatever they were, they certainly appear to be disturbing to those who received them. This is Greg Reese for NewsWars.com. Thank you very much. It's a great honor. And this is a beautiful aircraft we're looking at. Look at that beautiful, very expensive plane for good reason. Today, it's my 
profound honor to award seven extraordinary soldiers with the Distinguished Flying Cross for their remarkable courage to rescue their fellow citizens. I want to very much thank Major General Matthew Beavers for being with us today. Thank you, General. Thank you very much. Thank you, General, very much. It's a great honor to see you. I want to welcome, and please sit down. Families, please sit down. You're all very proud of these gentlemen, I think, right? I think. Is anybody not proud of their husband? Is anybody not proud? No? Good. Then we'll proceed. <laughs> welcome to Chief Warrant Officers Joseph Rosamond, Kip Godding, Irvin Hernandez, Brady Labine, G. Jung, and Sergeants George Escoval and Cameron Powell. Thank you very much. And I will say that uh, it's such an honor to be in your presence. You'll hear a story shortly that was very inspiring to me and to everybody else. And that's why these are very important medals. And uh, it's great to be with you. Joining us are uh, also warriors, but warriors of a different type. They're called great congressmen. And uh, they're from your area. Doug LaMalfa. Thank you, Doug, very much. Appreciate it. Tom McClintock. Thanks, Tom. Um, doing a great job. And Greg Walden. And we'll miss you, Greg. I can't believe you're not going to be there. He's retiring undefeated. Nobody would defeat him. And uh, but it's a great honor. And you uh, it's uh, really been fantastic working with Greg. We worked on something in particular, right to try. Right, Greg? And we got it done after 44 years. We got it done. So thank you very much. Just over one week ago, these brave pilots and crew members of the California Army National Guard embarked on a harrowing mission. As the sun set on September 5th, they boarded two helicopters that are behind me. Then they flew into blazing flames, raging wind, and it was raging, and blinding smoke to rescue families who were trapped by the massive creek fire at the Mammoth Pool campground. While they were on their way to the campground, the crew received word from state and local officials and headquarters that it was far too dangerous to continue the mission turn back, but they decided to continue anyway, knowing they might not return. They knew that people were in danger, great danger. As night set in, they could see almost nothing through the miles of dense smoke. Using their night goggles and their expert navigation skill, they reached the camp. They found the stranded families, many of whom were badly burned and injured, and they loaded them as many as they could onto the two helicopters. Then they made the perilous flight back to the base. As soon as they unloaded the passengers, they again risked their lives and flew back into the blazing fire to rescue more victims. Their superiors said, you cannot do this. You cannot do it again. They did it. The smoke had become even more overpowering, yet they returned a third time. After 10 grueling hours, they completed their mission, having saved the lives of an astounding 242 people. We are proud of them. That's an incredible, wow. that's, inc that's an incredible story. And I spoke to some people that really didn't want you to do it. They didn't want you to go back on those flights. To each of you, your unyielding and undying determination lifts our nation. You're what makes our nation great. And we thank you very much. Thank you very much. Incredible job. Over the last week, these devoted soldiers have continued to rescue more stranded individuals from danger. In fact, less than 48 hours after their rescue at Mammoth Pool, they flew to another treacherous mission. On the first two attempts, they were forced to turn around and they were advised to abort the mission. You must abort the mission. But they chose to try a third time at great risk to their own lives, through tremendous skill and incredible valor, they save 50 people from absolute imminent danger. Our nation is strong because of remarkable individuals like these service members. In the midst of our greatest trials and biggest challenges, America prevails because of the brave and selfless patriots who risk everything 
so that they may save lives of people in many cases that they don't know. They have no idea who they are. It's like law enforcement. They save the lives of people that, for the most part, they have no idea who they are, but they're so determined to do it. Today, our country honors their courage, and we're inspired by their example, and we thank God for the blessing and all of our blessings that you're safe. Our nation has really benefited by your bravery, and on behalf of our great nation, I thank you very much. As your president, I thank you very much. Great job. And now I'd like to ask the military aide to come forward and read the citation, please. Okay, thank you. Attention, attention to orders. The President of the United States hereby awards the Distinguished Flying Cross to Chief Warrant Officer 5, Joseph Rosamund. Chief Warrant Officer 5, Kip Godding. Chief Warrant Officer 2, Brady Labine. Chief Warrant Officer 2, Irvin Hernandez. Warrant Officer 1, G. Jung. Sergeant George Esquivel, Jr. And Sergeant Cameron Powell of the California Army National Guard for distinguished acts of heroism and extraordinary achievement in aerial flight on September 5, 2020. The brave actions and superior airmanship of these soldiers resulted in the successful rescue of 242 adults and children from the rapidly developing Creek Fire in Central California. Their actions are in keeping with the highest military traditions of selfless service, honor, and personal, personal courage and reflects great credit upon themselves, the 40th Combat Aviation Brigade, the California Army National Guard, and the United States Army.
everybody, it's me, Angel Wallace, and I'm Vada, and we have a great crowd here tonight. You can start seeing the people. We just got off the bus, and it's massive, and what you see here is lagging behind still, and there's buses bringing in truckloads of, and people are going crazy, so someone has arrived. Okay, so I'm going to take little snippets as I go along, and I'll be reporting as usual. Okay, love you, see you, bye. I think he 
probably.